Hello and good day, everyone. My name is Darlena Birch, MBA, RDN, and most importantly, public health dietitian. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I discuss U.S. federal nutrition programs, the important role they play in ensuring the health and well being of all Americans, and how public health dietitians work tirelessly to support these amazing programs. So, even though this video is technically airing on Monday, November 1st, I do want to point out that I am currently filming this episode on Sunday, October 31st, aka Halloween, aka my favorite holiday. So, I am in costume. All views expressed on this channel are my own and do not represent the opinions of any entity whatsoever with which I have been. Am now or will be affiliated. So in my last video I mentioned that I'm going to spend the next few episodes focusing on women in public health because I just don't think many people realize the significant contributions that women have played in both the field of nutrition and public health nutrition at large. So I want to spend some time elevating the significant contributions that women have made in this field. For today's video I'm going to talk about Hazel Catherine Stiebeling, pioneer of USDA nutrition programs. If Hazel Stiebeling sounds familiar to you it's because I briefly mentioned mentioned her in my episode about USDA food plans, where she played an instrumental role in developing USDA food plans that are used to this day. Strong and alert nations are built by strong and alert people. Strong and alert people are built by abundant and well-balanced diets. No nation achieves strength unless all of its citizens are well-fed. To be well-fed means more than filling the stomach with foods that appease hunger. It is more than getting the food that barely protects the body from disease due directly to poor diet. It is having each day the kind of food that will promote abounding health and vitality. Hazel Catherine Stiebeling was born in Haskins, Ohio on March 20th, 1896 to Adam and Elizabeth Brand Stiebeling. The eldest daughter, she had two brothers and three sisters. Stiebeling's father had come to Ohio from Sassen, Germany. During high school, Stiebeling became acquainted with USDA publications dealing with food and nutrition. She developed an interest in scientific aspects of home economics and after high school, enrolled in a two-year program at Skidmore School of Arts, which is now known as Skidmore College, located in Saratoga Springs, New York. Stiebeling is said to have been inspired by a book she discovered in the college's library by Dr. Henry Sherman titled The Chemistry of Food and Nutrition. In 1915, Stiebeling graduated from Skidmore and was hired to teach at her high school, even though she only had a two-year degree. After teaching for three years, Stiebling enrolled in Teachers College, Columbia University in New York City. There, she became an assistant to Professor Mary Swartz Rose. Stiebeling completed her Bachelor's of Science in Food and Nutrition and Biology in 1919 and her Master's of Arts in Nutrition in 1924. During this period, she taught at Kansas State Teachers College for three years. Stiebeling became a research fellow under Dr. Henry Sherman. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because I just mentioned it when I noted that Stiebeling was inspired by a book that he wrote. Her research was in the basal metabolism of women, the influence of vitamin D on calcium deposition in the bone, the nutritional value of protein in human subjects, the chemical nature of constituents of the vitamin B complex, and other projects. She was awarded a PhD in chemistry in 1928 after 15 years of intermittent in work and study from Columbia University. Her thesis was on a method for studying the content of vitamins A and D in tissues. After graduating from her PhD program, Dr. Sherman suggested that Stiebeling take the civil service examination for openings in a new research organization in Washington, D.C. within the United States Department of Agriculture's Bureau of Home Economics. She followed his advice and was duly placed on the eligible list. In mid-May 1930, she received a letter from Dr. Louise Stanley, chief of the bureau, offering her position as a senior specialist at $4,600. This position was made possible by a new federal appropriation of $10,000 for a study of food purchasing habits of housewives. Immediately following her appointment in 1930, Stibling initiated an extensive program of both basic and applied research to investigate the nutritive value of diets in the United States. Her program focused particularly on designing nutritionally adequate diets for families who did not have adequate incomes, examining relationships between the incidence of pellagra and the nature of the food supply, and investigating the nutrient content of foods. Stiebeling's program was continued and expanded throughout the Great Depression and World War II. It provided a wealth of basic knowledge about the nutritional value of the food supply and food consumption and nutritional status in the United States. So in case it isn't obvious, Hazel Stiebeling made a lot of contributions in her time working for USDA. Hazel Stiebeling developed a USDA publication on diet planning in 1933 that is the first known publication to include the term dietary allowances. So for my nutrition nerds out there, fellow dietitians or soon to be dietitians and hopefuls, Hazel Stiebling is why dietary allowances are a thing. She was the first one to create this term and she is responsible for our use of them to this day. So as I said, Stiebling developed this publication in 1933 and it's the first known publication to include the term dietary allowances. 
It was the first quantitative national dietary standard for the minerals calcium, phosphorus, iron, and vitamins A and C. The values were based on her research in the Sherman Laboratory. Beginning in 1936 and for some time thereafter, Stiebling represented the USDA at international conferences on food and nutrition, especially those of the League of Nations Health Commission. This brought Stiebling in touch with many international health authorities that were wrestling with problems similar to those that she was dealing with at the USDA. The association Stiebling made during these meetings likely enhanced her knowledge of international nutrition and health problems and food and nutrition policy and encourage her pursuits at USDA. In 1939, Stiebling worked with Esther Fippard to include USDA dietary allowances for thiamine and riboflavin. From inception, the USDA had a mandate to provide food and nutrition information to the public. Hazel Stiebling made extraordinary contributions to that tradition. Her first research on the economics of food availability resulted in publication of food plants in cooperation with the Extension Service and the American Red Cross. From 1931 to 1933, food plans were designed to provide an adequate diet at low cost, reflecting problems that families faced during the Great Drought in the South and in the Great Depression of the early 1930s. Later, food plans were designed for individuals and family groups at four spending levels. During her tenure at USDA, Stiebling held a variety of leadership positions positions, including Chief of USDA's Bureau of Human Nutrition and Home Economics from 1944 to 1953, Director of Home Economics Research from 1953 to 1957, Director of Institute of Home Economics from 1957 to 1961, and ARS Deputy Administrator from 1961 until her retirement in 1963. On May 18, 1989, Hazel Stiebling died in Alexandria, Virginia. Stiebling was a pioneer in applying sample survey methods to national nutrition programs in order to arrive at the knowledge of food habits of population groups and other factors. Her research and interest in diet deficiencies in the United States States led to the development of school lunch programs and programs for increased consumption of milk, fresh fruit, and green vegetables. I could talk forever about all the cool things Hazel Stiebling contributed to the world of public health nutrition, but for the sake of brevity, I'll stop here. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you see, please smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, you're your own best advocate. Feed your body well, nourish your soul, nurture your mind, and nutrify your spirit. Remain true to yourself and never forget that every second forward is another opportunity to be a better version of your past self. Bye.